now entering the days of Slichos, a couple of questions come to mind. The first one is, why do we say Slichos so many times? In other words, the Yudgim Amidos, Sukim HaShem Erech they are repeated every time, multiple times, and then again for multiple days, all the way through Yom Kippur, and then in the Elohs, again, that extreme repetition of the Yudgim Amidos and HaShem Erech what is the purpose of doing it so many times? Is it not sufficient to say and to call out to Hashem's Rachamim just once or twice? What is accomplished at the extreme repetition? The second question is a medrash that Rashi brings down and says that when Moshe Rabbeinu was all alone, he ascended the heavens and he found Hashem being Isaac in the middle of Erech Apayim. And Moshe Rabbeinu asks, is this for tzaddikim? And Hashem answers, no, I feel a little shy. And then Hashem continues to say that you yourself will have to use this. And indeed, this was the media that Moshe been used by the Miraglim and by the Ego. So what was this conversation? Was there a machloikis here? Was there something that Moshe Rabbeinu was misunderstanding? That this media would not apply for a shoy? And particularly Moshe Rabbeinu, who was the champion of Klai Yisrael, who defended them even when they sinned, as indeed he continued to do so. So what's the machlikus? What's this conversation between Hashem and Moshe that was so important that the Medrash writes it down for posterity? So I would like to use an academic concept to try and perhaps understand or glean an insight into these questions. And that is the purpose of repetition. There are times in education where it's very important that a person repeats and acquires a skill to the point of automaticity in order for them to be successful. And particularly, there are three subjects or three domains that really require that level of automaticity. The first one is reading, both Hebrew and English, or any language for that matter. The second, I think, is math. And the third one is Gemara. Why those subjects? Because reading is the portal into all other knowledge. We acquire knowledge through reading. And if a person is going to be struggling with the skill of reading, so then there's something that's called brain fatigue. That after a period of effort, the brain stops functioning or stops acquiring knowledge. And therefore it's important that reading does not take any intellectual strength so that the brain is free to be able to acquire the new knowledge and to look at something or the new concept and to be able to understand it and process it. So reading needs to be automatic. So to math, math builds upon itself. In order to get to the higher level math, you need to know the initial levels perfectly. In other words, you need to be able to know your addition, your multiplication tables in order to be able to start dealing with algebra or in statistics or geometry. If you're going to be still tripping up on the basic math, you will always be getting it wrong as you get to the higher levels of math. So that too, math needs to become automatic. And the third one is Gemara, I believe, because Gemara, in order to truly understand and acquire the insights or to attain the understanding that's really hidden inside the Gemara, requires a tremendous amount of chazar. And it's only after one has reviewed the Gemara and really understands the ins and outs and has, has, has applied himself and placed his mind inside the Gemara to such an extent that the true insights first become revealed. So let's take those and apply that to Slichas. That so too the Midas of Hashem are not necessarily acquired when you say it the first time. One of the things that is supposed to happen is we're supposed to be able to see the world. We're supposed to use them as a portal into seeing Hashem in the world. But that only works if we apply ourselves to that. And then Rabbi Shabbat said to Hashem, Great, I understand that these Yud Gimomidas and Hashem Erech HaPayim is able to give us access to tremendous insights as we look at the world. But that's only for tzaddikim that are going to do so. But the average Jew that just struggles to say the words, even though they don't have much meaning, what will be with them? And Hashem answers, not only them, but even Rishoyim. And so too, it's like math, that a person is supposed to take those meters and build on them. We're supposed to internalize them and emulate Hashem's ways. Ma'ashem rachum, ma'hu rachum, afatar rachum, and such like. 
And again, Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, that's great for the tzaddikim that are going to emulate Hashem's ways and do a chashben and nafesh and change what they're doing. But the average Jew that just struggles to say the words, even though they don't have much meaning, well, we'll be with them. And Hashem answers, not only them, but even Rishoyim. And finally, it's like Gemara, and even more so, that if we contemplate them and then put our minds and all of our efforts and our essence into those Midois, we are able to access a connection to Hashem that is truly profound. And there will be insights that will only be available after a tremendous amount of effort. And again, Moshe says to Hashem, that's great for tzaddikim who will do that work and effort. But the average Jew that just struggles to say the words, well, we'll be with them. And Hashem answers, not only them, but even Rishoyim. And why is that? Because that is the gift that Hashem gave to Klal Yisrael. That He said, if you use these words, if you say these midos, even if you don't understand it, and even if you don't, internalize it, and even if you don't build upon it, they will lead you on a path that will give you a connection to Hashem. And that's a Chiddush that's not necessarily something Moshe Rabbeinu would have understood. It doesn't even make sense intellectually. It's a gift that Hashem gave to Klai Yisrael. Say the Slichus. Say the Yud Gimamidus. Hashem Erech HaPahim. And the words will lead you to be able to get, to, first of all, you'll be able to receive tshuva, but it'll lead you on a path back to Hashem. Yisrael Yisrael Avoyed says that a person should even try and behave in a way as if he understands what it is, and to shakal and to say it with fervor, even if he doesn't feel it in his heart. Because here too, the words and the process lead the person to become a greater person. It leads a person to tshuva and leads a person to that connection even if he doesn't do other things. So tzlichus, while it might be repetitive and it might seem difficult for us to understand why we do it, is the biggest gift that Hashem has been able to give a human being. And so may we be zeicha to aksiva v'chsima teiva. And as we say the words of tzlichus and we daven to Hashem, may we taka be able to internalize them Use them as a way of seeing the world differently than we did till now. May we be able to build on them and become changed and new people with a tremendous connection. May we be able to have a profound relation with Hashem that is indeed beyond our comprehension and indeed the greatest gift of all.